not a, a large announcement, but uh, done in a very non-fuss manner by m and and uh, while the announcement is well known, I'll just run you through what Mahindra Mandir has done. They announced this restructured succession plan over the next couple of years. And I just want to very quickly take you through that plan because a lot of you are aware of it. And then the implications of this at all uh, uh, from a brokerage perspective, from what I believe. And we'll get in Minka to talk about this as well. So they, have re they will redesignate Chairman and Anand Mahindra as a, as a non-executive chairman from April 2020. But what is also very interesting, because Anandindra, of course, stays on board as a consultation, as a father figure of sorts, is a lot of other changes that have happened, some surprising, some not so. Very quickly, three or four important ones, and then I'll take you to what brokerages are saying about this, because this is news that came out on Friday. Paran going, guys, currently the managing director, he'll become, he'll get the position of the CEO as well from April 1st to April 1st, 2021, <clears throat> and then he retires. And what's come as a name, which is not generally something that media has spoken to or people don't know about too much is Anish Shah who is currently the group president of Stra strategy he has been appointed as the deputy MD and group CFO from April 1st 2020 which is the D-Day from which a lot of changes are happening but he will be appointed as the MD and CEO from April 2 2021 that is the key thing that he becomes the MD and CEO of m and from April 2nd 2021 the current group CFO Partha would of course report to him and then there are a couple of other changes that have been that have happened as well within the group wherein um, uh, I think him and Luthra gets appointed uh, uh, a non-executive position on the board so on and so forth but the three major changes are these Anand Mahindra non-executive role uh, Pawan Goenka uh, uh, outgoing uh, gets the post of the CEO as well until 2021 April 1st and then moves out and Anish Shah essentially gets the plum role and then a few other people report to him now how have people viewed this and I think to my mind there was only one question really the point to ponder is is this that will the new management team in, in that sense drive a more definitive focus towards the strategic evaluation of non-core diversification at Mahindra and Mahindra to my mind really that is the one thing to be answered I don't know how Menka thinks about it but to my mind this is the one thing about m, &M. a lot of businesses are on their autopilot mode they will move as per cycles but can the management look at the uh, non-core diversification that is the key thing now Goldman Sachs gave out a view on this as well they believe that over the last few years there has been very slow progress on non-core diversification which has weighed in on the core performance this is Goldman Sachs view that this has weighed in on the core performance the highly diversified business structure has resulted in lower valuation multiples so this is the other thing that they are saying uh, remember Goldman Sachs has applied about a 30% whole core discount to listed subsidiaries within the SOTP valuations and the focus on the core business segments could actually drive additional value for Mahindra and Mahindra as a company and as a stock is what Goldman Sachs has said now this is of course one brokerage view that has come out I gave you what I thought as well very important to get in the perspective <coughs> about about what how how non fast was this whole announcement about a large index stock their succession plan and what could the implications of this be Minka Johnson on the phone line Minka uh, just I mean the change in Anand Mahindra's role but also the view on how this whole process has been carried out hey good morning Neeraj well you know it's, it has been exactly as you said a non fast uh, you know, non-drama process, quietly done, uh, to the extent that there was some expectation uh, that this process was underway and had been reported, uh, you know, by the media in the months prior. But again, not too much speculation on who the new person will be to take over as managing director and CEO. It was well known uh, that Mr. Koenka's uh, term was coming to an end and that he was heading for superannuation. It was well known that many other leaders in the group were heading towards, uh, you know, retirement of sorts. And so, therefore, succession planning uh, was critical. Uh, but, you know, un unlike most other Indian companies, uh, m and I must say, has managed to pull this off rather quietly. But two important points to make. One is the change in Anand Mahindra's role. You've spelt it out for re uh, readers and viewers. Uh, and I'll just make a couple of quick points there. Now, it was expected that he would move to a non-executive directorship. Uh, mostly because there is a SEBI regulation that kicks in April 1st, 2021, and that, uh, to April 1st, 2020, my apologies. And as, in, as a result of that, uh, all large listed companies have to ensure that they have a non-executive director as chairman. Uh, so Mr. Mahindra simply only just advanced his non-executive directorship by a year or so, 
uh, because he's currently 64, and I think that might have been something that he would have done only after 65. So the regulatory push is one important reason. But even then, I mean, you know, I think it's worth noting that Keshav Mahindra, which was probably the second generation, second or third generation at um, the Mahindra Group, was executive chairman for almost 50 years. Anand Mahindra, who took over as executive chairman from him in 2012, has been so only for seven years. You know, he's only on one other group company board, which is the Tech Mahindra board, and his family owns just about 12% of M&M. So what does this tell you? Um, it tells you that A, there's a regulatory push. B, Anand's always had the approach to building a non-dynastic, professionally managed, federated structure. C, with 12%, it's justified that he stays non-executive as chairman, even though his family name has been lent to the company. And I, I must say that Mr. Mahindra had prepared all of this for several years now. In fact, just this January in Davos, when he spoke to me and I asked him, given that nobody in his family was really very keen to participate in the management of the operations of Mahindra and Mahindra or the group companies, how would he view the ownership of this in the years to come? Uh, and he had said that we'll take a family office view. I think that is the way we would look at it. Whatever role my family plays in the future, it will be one to go to the professional management into preserving our wealth and enhancing it. I'm quoting this from an interview he gave me in January this year. He also spoke to ET a couple of years ago where he did point out that we don't view Mahindra as a family business. My grandfather and grand uncle, this is Casey and JC Mahindra, who founded the Buck Company, started it in a wave of patriotism in 1945 and saw themselves as custodians of public money and trust. So we've never viewed ourselves strictly as a family company. I thought for many years that I'd be a filmmaker, and that didn't bother my father at all. There are absolutely no dynastic inclinations in my family. He said this in response to a question when asked why his daughters weren't working at the company, and he said there is no force, force on them to do so. So that's what I had to say about change in Anand Mahindra's role from an executive chairmanship to a non-executive chairmanship. And I think that's important to note. But it I is. think here's what's even more important to note, which is that two gaps have currently opened up in the succession plan lineage. Yeah, I mean, and, and that was my question because on Friday when we looked at this news as well, uh, there were, I, I'm not saying from a capability perspective, but from the names that you would usually expect, there is, there is a, a change in the leadership deck. What do you think about the new leadership at the management level? So, uh, I, you know, I must confess, I'm not offering a personal opinion. I'm just looking at the information regarding the new leaders and just trying to point out some key critical capabilities, right? For instance, uh, you know, Anisha, who, like you pointed out, will be Deputy MD and Group CEO, CFO for one year, starting April 2020, that's next year. And then he takes on the mantle of MD and CEO for four years. Equally importantly is the second appointment that's happened, Neeraj, uh, that we haven't discussed so far. And that's the appointment of Rajesh Jejurikar as Executive Director of the Automotive and Farm Sectors for five years, starting April 2020. So what do you have? You have two very senior people in place. Uh, that are effectively going to run M&M, which is the parent of a conglomerate, and M&M, which is an auto and tractor company, in fact, the largest tractor company in the world. So now take a look at what Anisha's core expertise is. Uh, again, I'm putting this out on based on public information that was filed with the stock exchanges. He's an MBA from IMA, a Carnegie Mellon PhD in corporate governance. He spent 14 years at GE Capital, his current group, her current group role at m and is group president strategy. And, you know, the, the filings describe his primary focus at work being on strategy, digitization and data sciences, group synergies, risk management, developing talent. So he's more a strategy and finance guy, uh, which is excellent, uh, you know, with regards to being suited to run a large conglomerate. You made an important point on the fact that as a holding company, uh, there is a certain burden on the stock price of m and uh, and how they view themselves as a conglomerate in the years to come will be very important for shareholders. Uh, and maybe, you know, Anisha fits that part of the role really, really well because he comes with a finance, corporate governance, management background. Uh, let's take a look at Rajesh Jijuika's core expertise, SPJ and MBA, executive programs at Wharton and Manchester Business School. Manchester is a manufacturing-oriented business school, so that's important to note. He's worked in packaging, in advertising, in media. He joined the M&M Automotive Sector as VP Marketing in 2000. He's been heading the farm equipment sector since 2013, also heads Swaraj Engines and the two-wheeler business. 
So he does have auto experience, but more on the marketing and business side, if I may put it that way. Though, you know, Rajesh has done a, you know, a swell job in the years since he came back to M&M recently uh, in being able to put effort into both the farm equipment sector and now I'm sure he will add the automotive sectors to his portfolio starting next year as well, uh, which is going to really put him in charge of the main core business at M&M. So if you imagine Anisha taking on the role of uh, the MD and CEO that looks at the conglomerate, uh, and looks at the financial structure, looks at the strategic management, you have to know that the core business at M&M, which is auto and farm, uh, will actually be handled by Rajesh Chiturikar as executive director of those businesses. But here's what's missing. This is the person that they're replacing, Pawan Goenka, who came from IIT Kanpur, where he did a BTEC, Cornell PhD, an executive program at Harvard Business School. He worked at General Motors in the R&D Center for 14 years before he joined M&M. He joined M&M in the R&D section, led the development of Scorpio. He then was appointed executive director of auto and farm sectors in 2013, which is the role that Rajesh Chichurikar will take on next year. He then went on, which is Pavan Goenka, went on to become managing director in 2016. And so the point I'm trying to make is Pavan Goenka came with the understanding of automotive building. He came for 14 years at General Motors R&D. He spent so much time in M&M R&D. So that technical experience is quite evidently missing both in Anisha and in Rajesh Jajurikar. Um, for an auto company, I would imagine that might be something critical to have. Or maybe they'll find another way to supplement it. I don't know the answer to how they'll fill that gap that Mr. Goenka leaves. Uh, they have Anish Shah and Rajesh Tejurikar taking on critical roles and doing a good job. But this one gap that Pavan Goenka leaves, uh, that neither of the two have you know, necessarily the training or the ability to fill, uh, that I think will be interesting to see how M&M deals with that. Because at the core of the parent company's business, is auto, right? So I think that's one important gap that opens up. And the second gap, very briefly, uh, whilst Anish Shah takes over as uh, Deputy Managing Director and Group CFO next April, and he holds on to that role till April 2021, um, there is no mention of who will be CFO thereafter, because Anish Shah progresses to becoming Managing Director and CEO uh, April 2021. V.S. Patrasati steps down as CFO, starting next year. Uh, and so who will be the group CFO once Anisha moves on to group, uh, who moves on to MD and CEO in April 1st, 2021? There's still time to answer that question. I imagine that's one unfinished part of the business uh, for the nomination and remuneration committee at M&M. It will be important for us to know who the group CFO will be, um, but we don't have any names just yet. So that's the second gap uh, Neeraj, that has yet to be filled. I'm sure it will be filled in due course. Uh, but I just wanted to point out these two things. Yeah, well, interesting perspective. Uh, and Minka, thanks so much. It's important to get this simply because, uh, I mean, as much as you looked at corporate India for so many years, uh, you looked at autos and M&M in particular, so many people that you know out there as well. So important to get that perspective. Thanks so much for uh, joining in and giving us that very perspective.